I call this meeting of Township High School District 211 Board of Education to order. May I have a roll call, please? Ms. Barron? Here. Mr. Bradley? Here. Ms. Cavill? Here. Mr. Dombrowski? Here. Mr. McGowan? Mr. Rosenblum? Here. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Here. Would everyone please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The next item is the recommended action is to enter closed session. The recommended action is that the board enter closed session to discuss minutes of meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meetings Act, probable or imminent litigation against, affecting, or on behalf of the public body, appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees, and collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Good evening. The recommended action is that the Board of Education return to open session. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Okay, hey, would everyone please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Before we begin the meeting, I would like to have a moment of silence. Um, I want to take a moment of silence to acknowledge the passing of a Higgins Education Center teacher assistant earlier this month. Kathy Bruning was a special education job coach who worked with us, our students as they gained valuable employment skills. She specifically served as a job coach with our students placed at IKEA and Dick's Sporting Goods. In this role, she helped positively impact young lives and empower students to gain more confidence and increased independence, both in high school and following graduation. So she has been with District 211 for just a short time. We are proud of all she did in diligently working with our students. Please join me in a moment of silence acknowledging Kathy. Thank you. Uh, Madam you President, I'm yes. sorry, I'm gonna shut this door. It's, I cannot hear with the fan that's going in this room. Oh, sorry. Then it's not that. Not the door. No, it's Is the there room. anything we can do about the, the fan? It is really difficult to hear and the fan is loud. I'm sorry, I'm not good with background noise. It makes it hard to hear. Okay, so I just politely okay, request nope. that everybody speak loudly into their microphones for me tonight. Could you put the microphones closer? It'll Thank you so much. Okay. Better. I'm sorry for the interruption. No, Madam no, no, that's okay. I know it was uh, loud for me also. All right, so uh, we have no recognitions this evening. That'll take us right to um, public comments. And I don't know if we, we have, have any public comments. comments. No. Okay, we have no public comments this evening. That will then take us to um, a presentation on strategic plan update, post-secondary success through college and career readiness. Thank you. As they're getting ready, uh, presenters, if you can move the mic right in front of you, that'll help. Thank you. And before we begin, I don't want to forget to state our mission statement because I find it very important. Um, Township High School District 211 serves the needs of our diverse community by providing relevant and rigorous learning experiences, yes. opportunities for involvement, and strong support systems that empower all students to reach their full potential. 
rights. Thank you. Speaking of full potential, Assistant Superintendent Josh Shoemaker and Director of College and Career Readiness Michelle Napier are joining us tonight to give an update on the District 211 Strategic Plan Goal 7, post-secondary success. District 211 is committed to preparing students for their future. We strive to ensure that our students have post-secondary options by building the following skills in each of our future graduates. A focus on academic growth, college and career readiness, student involvement in the school community, global competitive skills, and physical and mental wellness. These skills form the foundation of our District 211 strategic plan, which outlines the priorities, goals, strategies, targets, to drive innovative progress over a five-year time period. As you know, this plan was developed by a steering committee comprised of staff, parents, students, community members, and Board of Education members, and covers 10 key priorities with goals and subsequent indicators, strategies, and targets for each priority. I'm honored to be here tonight with Michelle Napier, our Director of College and Career Readiness. We will present information focused on the project, or the progress in Strategic Plan Priority 7 post-secondary success through college and career readiness. Specifically, we will share details about how we utilize data from the National Student Clearinghouse, the Northwest Council for Student Success, or NEXUS, as well as our efforts to engage our graduates and alumni, as well as the career pathways, business partnerships, and emerging fields of study that are part of our progress this year. Goal seven of the strategic plan states that all District 211 students will engage in preparation and experiences for college and career readiness throughout high school. One of the indicators we will describe this evening is 7.2, establish a system that uses student post high school experiences to inform changes to current college and career preparation programs. The targets for both last year, which were accomplished by Ms. Napier and her teams, and this year are now displayed on the screen. They include a focus on utilizing available data engaging our own graduates and the development of an alumni survey, survey tool. One of the most comprehensive sets of data that we study is provided by the National Student Clearinghouse. In addition to providing college students the ability to verify their enrollment or degrees, this non-for-profit organization maintains a comprehensive electronic registry of student records and provides a single automated point of contact for organizations to access data regarding student post-secondary choices and success. As an example, their data shows that about 74% of District 211 students enroll in a college or university immediately after graduating from our schools. It also shows 91% of those students return for a second year at college or university. Locally, our Nexus partnership also provides data specific to our students who attend Harper College. This data includes information about the courses of study that our students choose, their persistence throughout Harper, and their achievement each semester, as well as students who earn a credential or a degree. The National Clearinghouse <coughs> aims to capture post-secondary collegiate data on graduate completion, transfer and mobility, persistence and retention, financial aid and loan status, and degree pathways for those post-secondary institutions that participate in their services. From the high school lens, having access to graduates' college trans transition rates and pathway degrees allows a data-driven approach to college and career readiness program as we work and prepare our students. While the National Clearinghouse focuses specifically on college and university data, our commitment to supporting students extends beyond the collegiate journey. As we prepare students for both college and career readiness in high school, it is important not only to track college outcomes, but to understand real impact on our graduates. This brings us to, to strategically establishing a system that uses student post high school experience to inform changes to current college and career preparation programs. Our initial step is to identify effective methods for engaging District 211 graduates to provide feedback on their college and career readiness, a tool that can tap on the experience of our former students post-graduation. We recognize that engaging alumni once they graduate from our schools can be a challenge as we lose personal connections. Our schools have worked hard to build formal and informal channels to capture feedback and continue connections with our alumni to support our current students. 
For example, we have had alumni panels return to their schools and speak to our existing students about their personal college, career, and student athlete experiences. Alumni reflect on their time as a District 211 student, providing valuable advice as our current students embark on their own post-secondary journey. Many times they end their own story with, I was a student sitting in your seat one time, and I wish I would have listened to the advice of my parents or my counselor or my teachers. So listen to me now. As we look to embed a district-wide strategic plan for obtaining alumni feedback, we brought together a team of District 211 school counselors to begin to identify methods to begin this process. Through this team, a district-wide senior exit survey was developed and implemented last school year as we look forward to building an alumni network of feedback. Our goal was to create a very simple survey for students to complete, yet obtain meaningful data regarding post-secondary plans to be used for programming planning while also capturing data to build a future alumni network. The survey incorporates questions related to, to students' self-reported post-secondary plans, including drop-downs to indicate trade school, apprenticeship, military, gap years, employment, two or four-year universities. In addition, depending on the student's response, we capture more specific information, for example, the school and intended major for college, the branch of military, or the type of trade school. Capturing this data and following the trends will be used to prepare future college and career programming and support our students in their personal planning. Students have the option to provide their personal email so that we can begin to create an alumni database for future engagement. Lastly, in order to support the development of a future educator pipeline, students can share if they intend on pursuing a career in a variety of areas of high school education. This information is shared with human resources to support the work led by Dr. Britton as we continue to build our future educators program. Our technology department automated this process that allowed streamlined data collection into our student information system, reducing manual data entry from school level surveys and the development of a standardized report. With this district-wide automated process, students and parents are able to view the student survey results in their infinite campus portal, while counselors have automated reports of student responses. In addition, visualizations of district data is available, allowing for a comprehensive view and providing trends and patterns across our graduating class. Our goal is to engage all District 211 students in college and career readiness experiences as we want to ensure our graduates are well prepared for the ever-changing workforce. But how do we know if our programs are truly effective? One solution is to develop a dedicated survey tool to engage recent alumni and gather feedback on their college and career high school preparedness experiences. Through the senior exit survey, as I mentioned previously, we now have a baseline of recent graduate contact information. Our next step is to develop and facilitate a survey to our most recent graduates approximately one year after they're graduated. By gathering feedback on their college and career preparation, we hope to gain insight into the effectiveness of our programs and identify areas for improvement from those who have just been through them. By identifying any gaps, we can determine areas to place more support and guidance to best meet the needs of our student. We will continue to cycle this track process over time and demonstrate the value of our programs. However, this step is just not about statistics. Our counselors, teachers, and staff are passionate about student success. This is also about understanding the dynamic landscape of our students' reality and ensuring that our college and career readiness initiatives evolve to meet the evolving needs of our alumni. Partner with local businesses and organizations is a part of our academic plan. In addition to using this alumni feedback as an opportunity to inform change for college and career programming, alumni surveys contribute to the development of a robust and engaged school community. By boosting alumni engagement, we reinforce that we value their input and are committed to their lifelong student success. Through alumni connections, 
The district fosters a sense of belongingness and loyalty among its alumni, potentially leading to increased support and involvement. This point leads us to our next strategic plan indicator as we partner with local businesses and organizations to ensure academic programs include rigorous curriculum and industry relevance. Whenever I have an opportunity to present and highlight our college and career framework, I always take a moment to recognize our District 211 community partners as we are rich with resources and are proud to highlight the commitment and dedication and passion they have to making a difference for our students. More times than I can remember, when talking to a valued community partner, they will share their own memories as either a District 211 student, a parent, or a grandparent, which reiterates the bond between alumni engagement and building strong partnerships. In the last two years, we worked hard to reestablish our longstanding business and organizational partnerships post-pandemic. Our academic programs and career and technical stu student organizations were excited to return to full capacity. Our teachers focused on re-engaging our businesses and community partnerships as they, as they too were faced with challenges and reorganizations of work during the pandemic. Incubator Pitch Night, the architecture competition, student-run bakeries, college night, on-job shadowing, career panels, and even the building construction open house were fully supported and only made possible by the re-engagement of our dedicated partners. As our business partners continue to evolve and grow, new and innovative technologies emerge. As Ms. Napier said, her teams play a critical role in collaborating with our business partners and organizations to determine not only what our students are doing now, but what they will potentially be doing in the future. One of our areas of focus is to ensure that our curriculum provides opportunities to engage with emerging fields and technologies. One of these emerging fields is information technology, which includes concepts related to networking, cybersecurity, app development, and digital communications. As you know, this is a fast changing industry and we are working to keep pace with the changes by providing our students a strong foundation in the critical concepts and skills necessary to be successful. A second emerging field is manufacturing engineering, which requires specific skill sets in both the traditional manufacturing as well as in the integration of technology and software applications with manufacturing. Finally, and perhaps the most emerging field we are exploring at this time is quantum information science. While I admittedly don't know exactly what that means, <laughs> what happens is you combine quantum mechanics with information and computer science. And then what happens is you develop theories, algorithms, and technologies that can allow possibilities far beyond our current computing power, which I don't know if you know this or not, but is now called classical computing based on this. Although I joke a little bit, it's a good example of how the fields of the future that were once studied separately, like in this case physics and computer science, are now and likely will be in the future integrated together. As we continue to partner with local businesses and organizations to ensure academic programming includes rigorous cur curriculum and industry relevance, another area of focus is to provide opportunities for staff and business leaders to collaborate regarding curriculum and industry relevance within our pathways. This strategic initiative highlights our commitment to enriching our educational programs in alignment with real world industry demands. One opportunity for our teachers to collaborate with industry professionals is through advisory panels. Advisory panels include our teachers, industry professionals, community organizations, and post-secondary partners. District 211 has strong and long-standing advisory partnerships that have been instrumental in ensuring our curriculum remains relevant to evolving real-world demands. Mark Hibner, our District Department Chair of Applied Technology, leads the Manufacturing Advisory Panel for District 211 and our region. He has worked very hard to build a strong and committed advisory panel of manufacturer professionals, organizations such as TMA, FMA, IMA, GCAMP, along with instructors from Harper College. This team meets four times a year to share best practices, industry updates, review curriculum delivered to students, and trends in equipment and new emerging technologies. 
These types of advisory panels are also embedded in building construction and culinary, CNA, education, automotives, and business. In addition, this year we have partnered with Harper College's career and technical education team, joining their established advisory panels to further expand our community partnership, including supporting our newest dual credit partnership and graphic design pathway. Additionally, through targeted efforts with our dual credit partnerships, with Harper and Triton Colleges, our teachers attend ongoing professional development, curriculum alignment workshops, and participate in classroom visits to ensure that our curriculum alignment stays current and is leveled to the college coursework expectations. This collaborative approach is a testament to our teachers' commitment to staying at the forefront of the educational innovation, preparing our students not just for graduation, but for successful and fulfilling careers in their chosen pathways. The Illinois Post-Secondary and Career Expectation Framework, also known as PACE, is a comprehensive three-part framework designed to provide students with guided exploration aligned to their grade level. One of its key areas of focus is career exploration and development, which is a continuum of experiences beginning with career awareness and exploration, career development experiences, and post-graduation program connections and employment readiness. As you can see through this slide, there are a variety of ways outside formalized advisory panels and post-secondary curriculum alignment that community partners provide key roles for student career development opportunities in partnership with District 211. In addition to the PACE framework, another piece of Illinois legislation that was introduced is the College and Career Pathway Endorsement. The College and Career Pathway Endorsement bridges the gap between high school and future careers and play a key role in both career exploration and community partnership. The District 211, Your Pathway to the Future and Career Readiness, is an interactive resource guide students and families use to support awareness, exploration, and experiences in preparing for college and career options. Students are encouraged to complete college and career activities through Maya Learning to begin to identify their personal goals and develop their four-year plans. Using the survey results, they guide, the guide will allow students to easily explore District 211 coursework that align to their personal career goals and the college and career pathway endorsements of the state. College and career pathways encourage partnerships with local businesses, colleges, and organizations, creating our network of career development experiences. In addition, collaborating with community stakeholders ensure that pathways reflect our local industry needs and prepare students for uh, in-demand jobs. College and career pathways is an important link between career exploration, community partnerships, empowering students to make informed choices about their future and contributing to the workforce. There are many examples within District 211 that can highlight the important community partnerships in action from culinary programs to the CNA and our business incubators to our automotive program. But to highlight the continuum career exploration and the strength and importance of our community partnership, District 211's building construction program truly captures the essence of this process. Even before we break ground, the students in the architectural design competition have created potential future homes using industry-aligned software and then present their projects in front of panel of industry professionals who volunteer their entire day to provide mentorship and feedback to each of our students. From that point, the building construction students begin to build through real life work-based learning experiences, having industry mentorship and even, uh, from every trade and meeting them on the job site to train them for safety, best practices, and offer career opportunities. Team-based challenges are embedded within our curriculum, offering continued mentorship from our industry professionals, focusing on essential employability skills and technical competencies. Our building construction teachers serve as members of advisory panels, receiving insight on best practices from industry professionals, union representatives, and trade apprenticeship program leadership. Our community partners have made significant contributions to the program, including annual donations of winter gear for all of our students in the program, 
In addition, scholarships, including tool starter sets and funds for tuition are made available to our students through generous donations from our business partnerships. Last year, students attended our first annual job fair where over 80 community members were ready to offer employment or apprenticeship opportunities to our graduating students. Students in this program have the opportunity to earn early college credit towards certifications in construction and the ISBE College and Career Pathway endorsement. Our community partners know our students are well prepared upon graduation and seek to hire District 211 graduates. And this is just one career pathway in our district. The same support can be seen across the district as our teachers work tirelessly to build strong pathway opportunities for all of our students. Our vision is to engage all students in preparation and experiences for college and career readiness throughout high school. Tonight, we highlighted two of our initiatives that support this goal. First, we leverage the valuable experiences of our students post high school. By creating better systems of feedback, we can tailor and enhance our existing programs to better align with the ever evolving dynamics of post high school education and professional opportunities. Second, Developing and maintaining strong partnerships with local businesses and organizations allows for strong collaboration between key stakeholders to not only offer rigorous academics within the classroom, but to align industry relevance to what students are experiencing. The combination of extensive programming and teacher and community commitment ignites students to explore their interests and develop their own pathway for future success. Thank you for allowing us to share some of this progress with you this evening. Thank you very much, and thank you for turning the, the blowers off. Truly appreciate that. Um, I'd like to start with Mr. Dombrowski. Do you have any questions? I have no questions at this time. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. Um, any questions? Um, Ms. Barron? No questions. Well, more comments. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to present today. Can you hear me? Um, this is all really great information and I love how you have um, really have kept your alum like engaged with our students and brought them back. Um, I think that is so um, great to just keep them engaged with our district with um, so our students can hear firsthand what's happening after um, graduation. So I think those are great. It's great that our um, district is establishing great networks and um, partnerships with the community as well. Um, you know, myself, I am product of District 211, and um, luckily, with my connections still, I was able to get an internship at a local agency here, um, which kept me engaged with, one, the district, one, the community, and all thanks to the networks that our teachers had, so that is great. And I firsthand saw today our culinary program at Friend High School, beautiful kitchen, by the way. <laughs> and um, just learning more about the certifications that our students are coming out with and getting them really um, into even like a manager's position that they can apply for after school. So it's really great to um, know that we offer those type of programs for our students to get them ready for positions beyond um, high school, so thank you. Any other questions? I do, thank you. Thank you once again for such a detailed presentation. Uh, like Michelle, I too am a 211 graduate. Uh, unlike her, I had no idea what I was gonna do after high school, so here we are. Uh, so my question as it relates to you guys partnering with local businesses, what determines what company you're gonna partner with and how would that fit into what a high school student would want to do um, after high school. Sure, so uh, as Ms. Napier mentioned, the PACE framework and, and associated legislature from the state and uh, pathways from the ISBE, those really drive um, how we organize that and who we would reach out to, but also when our community and our organizations reach out to us in turn or back to us in turn, then we set up other programs or um, potential internships or work experiences for our students within that. So really, it's a two-way process uh, and we're always looking for more. Definitely. <laughs> I have been out to the Higgins Center doing financial literacy, so it's an amazing experience. So yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Mr. Rosenblum. Thank you, thank you very much for the presentation. You know how I feel about career readiness. 
and college preparation uh, from an employer perspective for sure, um, as well as what the district's been able to provide to my, my kids. Um, and my son does come back and speak at Schomburg High School to the business students and absolutely loves doing that. So he's got that connection. Um, I have a couple questions. One is something that's come up to, to me from people in the community and graduates is whether or not there's, and I know that we um, connect with our graduates from a survey perspective to help us from a curriculum and programming viewpoint. Um, has there, is there um, any plan, or maybe there are in some schools, alumni associations that are more formal organizations uh, with programs, structure, maintaining mailing lists, social media presence, things like that. I do know that we have alumni come back at five-year intervals, I think it is, for football games, and those seem very, very well attended for the ones that I've been able to, uh, to see. But I was wondering if there's activity around a more formal alumni program to continue to keep those people engaged for years and years to come? Sure, that's a, that is a great question. And we had uh, great conversations on our team around the concept of the alumni survey and specifically what is the purpose of the alumni survey and what do we want out of it? And certainly there could be a million things that we could get out of an alumni survey, right? But we had to really narrow it down. So to answer your question directly, each school has, um, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't describe it as you described it, like a robust program and organization, but each school has particular staff members that are the connection points for our alumni, um, and we're working to build that system. The biggest barrier we have to that system is how do we communicate, how do we effectively communicate with our alumni? And there's different methods depending on the year of graduation that they prefer right, or that they use, and so we're working on that system and we're hoping actually the structures that Ms. Napier is setting up as far as the graduate survey before they leave us and then the one year out uh, can strengthen those communication channels and then provide us the opportunity to follow over the years. So I would be happy to share with you uh, offline um, my high school alumni association that is extremely formal with officers and wow and you know, calendars and all kinds of things. Um, like a college alumni association operates very similarly, but it, for the, the high school sure. alumni. Um, and I, I think I would be formissed if I didn't mention that um, back on, Febu on January 8th, um, Mrs. Napier knows and Dr. Small knows and uh, Anna Klimkowitz attended uh, as well that uh, I participated in a panel that was hosted by Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy at Harper uh, where we spoke about um, the challenges that people have in uh, employers requiring certain minimum education uh, especially around college education and how uh, he's actually presented uh, a bipartisan bill called the Opportunity to Compete Act that's moving through different committees and such right now mm -hmm. to allow people to use skills. So it's for skills-based hiring. And I was there both representing my employer and talking on behalf of, of some of the great things we're doing in District 211 around those very things that you had mentioned on slide 16 around uh, career opportunities and the different programs that we have. And I was able to mention several of those um, in that open panel forum and kind of tout our school district and some of the great things we have going on under your leadership. So, so I was really pleased to be able to do that. So thank you again for the information tonight. Ms. Cavill, questions? Yes, just a couple. It's short list for me <laughs> tonight. Uh, my first question is, um, do you know if Nexus includes international programs in their tracking, or is it really just US-based colleges? So Nexus is only our area, so it's mm. particular to Harper. Okay. Um, clearing, if the clearinghouse would include that if the college or university is part of the clearinghouse. Most are, but not every, not every one. Okay, excellent. And then um, this is not actually a question. This is just a request on slide seven here. Um, at the bottom, 
in that bottom box, it says there's a visualization of the district data, that the survey data is available in visual format. And I, I for one, would be really interested to see an example of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe this is just one survey that was given last spring, right, Correct. as the initial. So if we've got a visualization about the results of that survey, I'd be very interested in seeing. Sure. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks again for the presentation. I loved you know, seeing you the first time <coughs> around. Um, this is one of the most exciting presentations I always look forward to an update on this area. This is something I feel really proud about in the district. So thanks for all of your good hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. It was excellent, well prepared. We're doing a lot of things. Also, thank you to Mr. Rosenblum for attending that presentation, um, being able to share exactly what District 211 is doing. I think it made an impact on the people that were present there. There were a lot of Harper, um, I don't know, chair people, administrative people um, that were shaking their heads and saying, yeah, we're participating in this. There's that connection there that we have with Harper and with the community. So thank you very much for being there. And thank you for the presentation. And you know, please let everyone know how appreciative we are of what they, the counselors are doing with all of the students, how the staff is engaging, and our business partners, how much we appreciate them and what they do for our students. So thank you very much. Thank you. With that, it will take us to the consent agenda. Um, I have been requested that item G, resolution authorizing intervention and proceedings before the State Property Tax Appeal Board be removed from the consent agenda. Are there any other items that board members would like removed? Okay. If not, then we're gonna have two motions. The first recommended action is that the consent agenda be approved with the removal of item G, resolutions authorizing intervention in proceedings before the State Property Tax Appeal Board. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Okay, the motion carries. The next item is the recommended action is that the Board of Education approve the resolutions authorizing intervention in proceedings before the State Property Tax Appeal Board, which seek assessed valuation reductions in excess of $100,000 for property tax year 2022. Docket numbers 2022-39236, 2022-39237, and 2022-24615, and further authorize Franzic as the Board of Education's legal representative to file request to intervene in appeal proceedings, proceeding forms with the Property Tax Appeal Board on the properties for which the district receives notification of appeal. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, discussion? Okay, uh, roll call, please. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? No. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. All right, that will take us to some information <coughs> items. The uh, Freedom of Information Act, uh, it's an information item. The next is the 2023 Consumer Price Index for Urban Consumers. Um, it's an information item, Dr. Small. Uh, the, in de January of each year, the Bureau of Labor Statistics releases the CPIU, and this current number is 3.4%. Attached to the agenda is a 10-year historical perspective for our public and the board. Okay, any questions? All right, then that takes us to the Secondary School Cooperative Risk Management and Workers' Compensation Insurance. That's an information item. Dr. Small? Otherwise known as SCRIMP, this is a sharing, a risk sharing insurance pool providing comprehensive insurance coverage at a lower cost than an individual district could obtain. 
This risk sharing insurance pool is governed by High School District 211, Main Township High School District 207, High School District 214, Northfield High School District 225, and Leiden Township District 212. This agenda item shows the annual information that is presented to the board regarding SCRIMP. Later on the agenda, the board will act on the recommendation to continue our participation in this risk sharing insurance pool. Any questions? All right, then that will take us to the student user fees 2024, 2025, and summer 2025. The recommended action is that for the 2024, 2025 school year, the student textbook instructional supply fee be set at $170. The driver education behind the wheel fee remained at $400 for the regular school year. The student parker, parking user fee remained at $75 per semester. And the under, under 1.5 mile transportation fee be set at $250 per year. That the late registration fee for transportation remain at $35 and that the late fee be imposed on registration payments received after July 1st, 2024. The price of a standard school breakfast be set at $2 for students and that the reduced price standard school breakfast remain at 30 cents for students. That lunch prices be set at $2.75, $3.25 and $3.50, including milk for students and that reduced price standard school lunch remain at 40 cents, including milk for students, and that all other summer school fees remain unchanged as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. I would like, uh, Madam President, and forgive me, I'm again not as familiar with Robert Rules of Order, so I'm at the mercy of your guidance. Personally, um, I agree with all fees presented in the motion with the exception of the textbook instructional supply fee being set at $170. So um, I would prefer it and I would like to propose a modification to the motion that with the elimination of that particular um, sentence so that we could vote on it separately. So my proposal is that the uh, motion would read that for the 2024-2025 <coughs> school year, um, the driver education behind the wheel fee, et cetera. Okay, would you, you would like to remove the uh, student fee? Uh, yeah, this, I mean, my, and vote on it separately. Right, so, because okay. I just okay. figured that's the easiest way to streamline the conversation okay. about it. Um, Perfect. Since I have no disagreement with any other fee on the list, if that makes sense. Okay, so um, we will, I'll read the motion again with the removal of that and we'll vote on that separately. Well, I, I don't know, do we need a consensus if everybody agrees to modify that motion? No, I believe that you sure. can request it to be, um, request the removal and to have that separately. Okay, thank you. All right, so let me read the motion again. That, um, would you like me to read the whole thing? I can. It's not needed. Uh, it's for not Mr. Necessary. Dombrowski, everybody is shaking their heads no. Okay. All right, so then the motion uh, reads as was stated with the removal of the student textbook instructional fee, um, supply, fee. Su supply fee to be set at $170. Everything else remains the same. That has been removed from this motion. So may I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, um, discussion on the items that were there. Any discussion? All right, roll call, please. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Okay, that motion carries. Now the recommended action is that for the 2024-2025 school year, the student textbook instructional fee, instructional supply fee be set at $170. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. So uh, thank you. Um, though I certainly understand the rationale, I respectfully disagree. So I would like to just very briefly explain. I promise this won't take a huge amount of time. Um, when I initially voted to uh, eliminate this fee, it was because we had such a healthy budget surplus. You know, and the argument was 
at the time that when we have, when we're flush with cash, we shouldn't be charging these kinds of fees. I was very, very happy to vote for that, and I have voted to maintain that since the original change, okay? Now, um, the rationales of presented for the reinstatement of this fee is largely based on our financial projections, which I have no issue with. I believe that those numbers, I have every reason to believe that those numbers are accurate and uh, will accurately, um, within the best of the administration's capability, reflect our future financial forecast. Um, I stated the first time this came up that going from zero to $170 feels like too steep of an on-ramp for me. To me, it feels disrespectful of our families and who, are, who have been used now for four years to being paid no registration fee. So um, I would pull the lever for that fee if I felt that our financial project, if we were in deficit now, as an example, and our surpluses were gone, that would be a compelling argument for me to vote for the reinstatement of this fee as presented. That's not our case at the moment. So if I look um, back at the information that was presented to us in association, in association with the proposed tax levy at November's meeting and the five-year forecast that was brought up at that time, um, at the end of budget year uh, 2024, the ARP financial projection is expected to remain in surplus, and then the projected decreases, according to the table in front of me here, are meant to start at a uh, you know, the year 2025 and grow in that way. So to me, um, this is a small enough amount of money, $1.7 million, that we could afford a gentler on-ramp for a fee. So I would be, for example, comfortable with a $50 registration fee that would allow the board next year to determine, based on our financial uh, reality as compared to our projection, be able to modify that, maybe eliminate the fee again if projections are coming healthier than planned, et cetera, and have a little bit more control over the slope of the on-ramp of the registration fee rather than just, well, we're expecting to go in deficit in 2025, so we're going to put the whole <coughs> fee up there right now. That's how I feel about this. And so if it remains at 170, I'm going, you know, I'm going to vote no. I'm in disagreement with that, but I wanted to explain my position. I would prefer it to remain at zero, um, but I would certainly be willing to vote for a $50 fee if that were to be um, agreeable to the board. So that's my position on this fee. Any other comments? I'm with you, Kim. I think the percentage at 50, I believe it's about a 30% of the original fee. I think it's just a little small, um, a little light. Mm -hmm. So I think if we increase it, I'd be right there with you just a little bit. 75? Perfect. I, well, before we, we end up doing that, let's have any further discussion before we end up modifying it. Yep. Um, well, we're just in discussion right now. I right. haven't put anything That's formal on the table. The question I have is um, from Dr. Small, what would the, the fee be used for? Has there been a, an earmark or, or target for use of that fee? Um, for the next year or two? Uh, the benefit of the reinstatement of the fee is it is similar to the first year cost of maintaining the ESSER staff for student licensed student services, the 13 positions that are in a different item. So if, if it's my understanding, then the, the plan was that this fee would cover the, the ability for us to maintain those 13 as her staff, is that an accurate it calculation? A, it is a similar cost for the first year in terms of revenue and expenditures. Okay, thank you. What I looked at, and, and I understand your position and, and I, I hear what you're saying, Ms. Cavill, but one of the things was we looked at, you know, these last four years, we did waive the fees. So we did help people that were in need at the time. Um, I believe that we are the lowest in our member districts around here with the registration fee, excuse me, with the fee for the supplies and the, the technology and that. I feel that there's between now and the time people have to pay is about six months, five to six months. I would really like to think that our, our community um, is able to, to see the value of um, what we offer, being able to plan 
within these last six months to be able to save for the $170 to be able to pay for this. Um, for these last four years, we've, we've waived it. So those individuals had definitely a, um, uh, a positive in regards to it. But I truly think we need to reinstate it again. I do not think that the fee is going to cause the families a tremendous um, uh, difficulty. If someone needs help with paying for these fees, they can certainly talk to the principal, to the staff, and see about uh, either getting the fees waived or paying for them over a period of time. So I, I see that there. I think we cover all the bases. If someone is on free and reduced, they're not paying this. So we are hitting the families. Uh, we are supporting the families that may not be able to afford it. Those who are struggling, they need to contact the school and see what kind of help they, they would need. I would support, I do support going to the $170 fee because I think it's important um, if it's gonna help us cover the loss of the ESSER funds and keep the staff that we increased, I think that that's important to me. I certainly understand where you're coming from and I think at the last meeting I made plain how much I want those ESSER mm -hmm. staff to. That's why I voted for the levy that we did. Okay, I, so that, that was my extension there of the grace. I'm just as interested in keeping those staff as, as you are. I, I struggle to believe that um, when I was presented with the case of we need to vote for the levy that was proposed to keep this staff and now the same argument is being made, well, we need to put the fee at 170 to keep this ESSER staff for a year. You're, you know, <laughs> then I, frankly, I'm starting to wiggle off the rails a little bit there because okay. I share the commitment to keeping the ESSER staff. What I'm quibbling about is the numbers and essentially the, the slope of the on-ramp to reestablishing a fee. And because of the tax strategy that we've used over the period of the last several years that you know, we've been congruently on the board, I understand that with the tax relief, this is the other side of it. You know, if we're going to um, not tax to the max each time, eventually we're gonna have to make decisions like this. So I certainly understand the nuances of that, but my position remains unchanged. I would prefer uh, a smaller fee at the first year to be able to revisit for the next year and maybe you know, then say, look, we have all this evidence, we need to make a case. That's simply how I feel, but I respect your position. Okay, all right. Um, any other comments? Mr. Dombrowski, do you have any comments? Yes, I, <clears throat> I, I don't support re-implementing this fee. I think we have a large population that would have this fee waived due to their financial consideration. I think it only, um, is a subsidy for, for those that, you know, are, are making their payments and doing their due diligence, you know, and, and just going through recent FOIAs, we have department heads, you know, sending emails saying, hey, you know, if you don't use your budget, then you're going to lose it next year. And, you know, I don't, I don't think it's in the best interest of the community and, and respectful to our taxpayers to just continually um, raise fees and, and especially with our excessive um, tax levy that we passed the last month. Um, I don't see our, our district needing these funds and I haven't seen any rationalization or justification for the need for these funds. Um, so I'm opposed to implementing this fee. All right, thank you. Any other comments? Um, I see both sides of the argument and um, it is 170, but then I also think about families who have more than one student as well, and that will be multiplied by the number of students also. So it's not just, I cannot just think of it as just 170. I have to think about it, it's 170 plus per student. So um, I would be comfortable bringing it down to either 50 or 75, whatever we feel as a board most comfortable with. Um, but yeah, 170 is a little too steep to begin reinstating right off the bat after zero. Okay, any other comments? What was the fee before we removed it? It was 170. It's always 170. been 170. 170. So there's no increase, it's reinstatement. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, the, the target expectation is that this money, if depending on how much, I guess, because we'd have people asking to have it waived, would go towards maintaining our ESSER staff. Okay. 
All right, are you ready to vote on this? And then if, um, we'll see how this vote goes and then we'll see what the next motion might be. Okay. All right, so let's take a vote on this. If we may, may I have a roll call, please? Uh, just to, for clarification, we're voting on the 170. We're voting on the 170 because that's the motion that's before us. Madam President. Okay. And, and Madam President, before we continue, if this does not pass, will there be a revised motion submitted? Well, we'll see what kind of a motion somebody brings forward. So there will be room for a motion immediately, if this doesn't pass, immediately following this. That's my expectation. Vote. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. May I have a roll call, please? Ms. Barron? No. Mr. Bradley? No. Ms. Cavill? No. Mr. Dombrowski? No. Mr. Rosenblum? No. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Well, I'm only the yes here. Uh, the motion fails. All right, then I am open to uh, a motion to come forward in regards to this. I move that the 2024-2025 school year uh, student instructional textbook instructional supply fee be set at $75. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion. Then roll call, please. Mr. Dombrowski? No. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. All right, the motion carries, and then the student <clears throat> textbook instructional supply fee would be at $75. And with us reevaluating it next year and seeing where we're at. When we do that, what I would like to see is the numbers. How many are the free and reduced? How many people asked for any kind of waivers? And um, I'm not sure what else, but let's perhaps take a look the, at those things. Perhaps a line item revenue specific to that amount that we charged this year. I, oh, okay. or this coming this year. comes what before the, us on an annual basis right. regardless, so we're asking the next time it comes before us for more uh, detail-oriented information around the specific fee yeah. and it, the funds it raises, right? Okay. Yes, I'd like to get a little bit more information. Thank you All for right. your patience, everyone. Okay, and Dr. Small, you know our direction here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, that takes us to... Um, I have uh, personnel recommendations, or did I miss something? No. Uh, hold on. Oh, Nine, third place. 9B. Yeah, we're 9B. Right. There we go. Proposed new policy, oh, BCBB. 9B. I was, I got lost here. Sorry. All right, 9B. Proposed new policy, BCBB board member development. The recommended action is that the board policy file BCBB board member development policy be adopted as proposed and added as an active board policy on board docs. Further, that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distributions. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. The next is the recommended action that board policy file JHCD, medication administration and schools policy be modified as proposed and added as an active board policy on board docs. Further, that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distributions. Roll call, please, or excuse me, motion, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Bradley. Aye. Mr. Dombrowski. Aye. Mr. Rosenblum. Aye. Ms. Cavill. Aye. Ms. Barron. Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz. Aye. Motion carries. The next recommended action is that board policy file JHCB anaphylaxis prevention response and management program policy be modified as proposed and added as an active board policy on board docs. Further, that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distribution. 
May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. The motion carries. The next recommended action is that the board policy file GBL personnel records policy be modified as proposed and added as an active board policy on board docs. Further that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distribution. May I have a motion please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call please. Ms. Cabell? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. The motion carries. Next recommended action is that board policy file DIF slash IGDG, student activities, trust and agency and convenience funds management policy be modified as proposed and added as an active board policy on board docs. Further that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distribution. May I have a motion please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, roll call please. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. Next recommended action is that board policy file FC environmental quality of buildings and grounds policy be adopted as proposed and added as an active board policy on board decks. Further that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distribution. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. We do need to add one thing to that. Mary Sue, can you go back? Did we miss? Did I miss one? She'll let yes. you know in the roll call. <coughs> We missed policy. We missed E, I, G, and A, F, A. and Hold G. On. Oh, that's correct. Mary Sue, can you read from the rolls the ones you missed? We missed, please. Policy I, G, A, A. <coughs> policy I, C, A. And that's it. And E, F, B. Okay, I oh, missed E, F, E, F, and G. You're right. I okay. All right, then let's finish with this one. Um, the roll call, we've got everyone? Yep, we're on E. All right, so Jay, um, the, the motion carried. All right, letter E. Uh, the recommended action is that the Board of Education authorize the superintendent to enter into a license agreement with the NOW Arena at a total cost of 100. We need to go back no. to, to no. what did uh, I miss? Nine, I'm sorry. 9E. 9E. Proposed policy revision IGAA, student social and social emotional, and emotional development. development. All right, hang on, then I've got something wrong here. All right, 9E. The board policy file IGAA, student social and emotional development policy, be modified as proposed and added as an active board policy on board docs. Further that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distribution. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? No. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Okay, the motion carries. And then I missed um, letter F. Letter F. Well, then I apologize. I didn't print that then. <coughs> All right. Letter F. Um, the board policy file IGAA, student social and emotional development policy, be modified as proposed and added as an active board policy on board docs. Further that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distribution. May I have a motion, please? Oh, did I? Oh. Sorry, guys. Okay, now I got it. Um, letter F, the board policy file, EFB, free and reduced price 
food service policy be modified as proposed and added as an active board policy on board docks. Further, that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distribution. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All right. Roll call, please. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Ms. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. All right. The next one is letter G. The board policy file ICA school calendar policy be <coughs> modified as proposed and added as an active board policy on board docs further that the superintendent be directed to make appropriate distribution. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Barron? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. All right, motion carries. I think I've got them all now. All right, I apologize. All right, the next item is the standing board committees. And the recommended action is that the Board of Education approve the committee members as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? All right. I was able to ask Mr. Bradley um, to work with Mr. Hildebrand and serve as co-chairs for our, um, the building and safety liaison, and then Ms. Cavill to serve as co-chair with Renee Erickson, our director of special education for the behavioral interventions. Um, so they'll set up, we'll set up a date, um, have the meeting, and then uh, they'll report back to, to our uh, board here. All right, may I have a motion please, or, excuse me, may I have a roll call please? Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. All right, the next item is the Winter Curriculum Committee Report. The recommended action is that the <coughs> Curriculum Committee Report and recommendations be approved as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. The next item is the recommended action is that the Board of Education support adding 13 licensed student services staff members to the typical staffing allotments beginning the 2024 2025 school year. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, roll call please. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? No. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. And the motion carries. The next item is the recommended action is that the Board of Education approve the purchase of security cameras from ESCO in the amount of $72,741.62. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Dr. Small? Every year, the district has expanded their camera system capacities by adding new camera units, replacing analog cameras with digital units, expanding camera system infrastructures, and closing the gaps in camera coverages in all of our facilities. The district has prioritized the replacement of the analog exterior security cameras with high definition technology. Palatine and Fremda High Schools have been completed. Tonight's action is to replace the and extend the prioritized camera views at Conant, Schomburg, and Hoffman Estates High School. After this first phase of replacements are completed at each school, the next priority area within the schools will be brought forth in stages to the board for review and approval. Any other questions or discussion? All right, roll call, please. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? 
Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. The next item is the recommended action is that the Board of Education authorize the superintendent to enter into a license agreement with the NOW Arena at a total cost of $183,855 for the off-site 2025 graduation ceremonies and $189,371 for the off-site 2026 graduating ceremonies for Palatine High School, William Fremd High School, James B. Conant High School, Schomburg High School, and Hoffman Estates High School. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? I just wanted to mention if anybody wants to know when graduations are being proposed, they should take a look at this item on the agenda. Was there a rationale? My only question is, um, and I forgive me, it didn't occur to me to ask beforehand, so I accept if there's no immediate answer available. And when we're looking at um, the, just the cost difference, $183,855 for 2025 and then $189,371 for 2026, was there a rationale given for the price increase between the two years? I don't know if there was an exact uh, rationale, but uh, we typically don't find contracts that remain the same each year. Okay. It's the cost so of doing business. The cost of doing business. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Roll call, please. Mr. Bradley. Aye. Mr. Dombrowski. Aye. Mr. Rosenblum. Aye. Ms. Cavill. Aye. Ms. Barron. Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz. Aye. The motion carries. The next recommended action is that the Board of Education authorize the superintendent or designee to enter into a three-year license agreement with no before for an annual cost of $24,698.23 for each of the three years of the agreement. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Dr. Small? In order to retain cyber liability security coverage and remain compliant under the Illinois Student Online Professional Protection Act, the district must have ongoing security awareness training program for its employees that regularly simulates phishing attacks. No before is the company that District 211 is currently using to conduct ongoing phishing simulations and training for all of our 2,000 district employees regarding cybersecurity awareness for our own work environment. Any questions? All right, roll call, please. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. Next item is that the Board of Education support a five year term extension for the membership of Township High School District 211 in the Secondary School Cooperative Risk Management Program effective January 1, 2024, through December 31st, 2028. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Dr. Small, anything? Mm -mm. Okay, if there's no questions, then roll call, please. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye, motion carries. The next item is um, format of committee reports, and that was something that was brought up at our last meeting. It's a discussion item. Mr. Bradley, do you wish to, to speak to that? <clears throat> yes, thank you. So um, going forward, I propose that uh, the committee reports um, would make it to the agenda. This way it would be um, public records. This way if there's information that the people in district would like to take away, they have that information. Typically, if there's a dinner available to the community or a ribbon cutting ceremony, that information is there. With us verbally stating it, a lot of that information could be missed. Okay. So just allow more access, that's all. Okay, so for, just to clarify, so if it's something actual that's going to be taking place through that particular activity, that committee, of sharing that information and we need to get that to our administration ahead of time so it could be put into the into the board information for our community correct okay what and maybe if we have um, <coughs> items from our committee meeting that maybe has some information if we can share that otherwise our verbal report uh, 
would suffice? Well, I think, you know, when you do the verbal report once again, that information could be lost in transit. You know, it, it stays here and then they walk away and the information is gone. But to allow hard copies like we do all other board information, I think would be important to the community to have. Uh, often you may come back with flyers and that flyer is kept here and it's not available to the community. And so, you know, honestly, the reports aren't just for us, but it's also for, more importantly, the community, and they're the ones that should have that access as well. Okay. Mr. Rosenblum, you were going to say something. So um, are the committee reports that are being referred to here school district committees? No, the ones on line item 11, those three committees, or four, whatever they may be. Okay. There, there are other committee reports as well. There are also committees, there are liaison positions that we hold with organizations outside of our district that we report back on during the committee reports. Those activities, those meetings, those conferences are typically not open to the public, but only open to school board members. And the committee reports agenda is that with which we report back what we may have experienced or learned to share with board members and the, the public Madam, during these oh, reports. So no. that's why I'm asking. Forgive me. Um, Madam President, if my memory serves me correctly, Mr. Dombrowski came up with a very elegant solution to this conundrum, um, as I recall, his language, and Mr. Dombrowski, I'm sure you'll correct me here if I'm wrong, but it was something to the effect of uh, committee reports should be submitted in writing. Um, but perhaps he can give us more information. It seems a very elegant solution to me. I, and I guess I would say that in some respects, if we have something that can be put into our board package for the community to know about, I think that that's good. Um, I think if we have things from IASB, that's for board members, and if the, the community knows about it, I think that's excellent also. In some cases, um, it might just be a sentence or two or very short information that we would put in. Um, I guess my thought is it would be of more value to be able to, to just verbalize it um, as to what transpired in that, in that committee. So to me, maybe we need a balance of both of those things. If we can provide something in writing, yes, let's go ahead and do that. But if it doesn't warrant it and it's something very brief, I think uh, you know, a verbal would, would uh, provide that same information. And I, I, perhaps a point of clarification um, and clarity, I believe that um, the Board of Education members have always had the option of submitting their committee reports in writing in advance of the agenda being issued so that it can be included um, in the agenda for public access and um, availability. Um, then the question, if we're going to, if we're going to be encouraged to also submit them in writing, um, would they be submitted to the superintendent? And if so, then would she be um, in some way responsible for putting it together for issuance and inclusion in the agenda, proofreading it for accuracy or um, correctness, so to speak? Um, how would that all come into being? I personally don't think that the superintendent should have to to do that activity of, of proofreading for us? Well, I, if I can chime in. Yes, please. The, the minutes have to be developed and written up by the administration anyway, so why not save them the trouble of having to take our verbatim and type it up into the minutes or into the summary of the board meeting? Why not just provide that as a written a, a written report so that they don't have to come back and transcribe our verbal reports. I, I think we, we don't transcribe the whole verbal report. 
it's basically a summary that a report was was given. And then that's to Mr. Bradley's point that the information doesn't get archived or conveyed to the community through our minutes. Okay. In some cases, we may not be able to write have a written report until the following meeting uh, because a committee might meet prior to when we have to have information into the board package. And I think the current policy then dictates that that item waits for the next meeting, right? So that it would be, would, that would remain unchanged, is, would be my understanding, Madam President. But if we want to provide information and it's something that needs to be told, you know, if we had a meeting two days ago or three days ago and it's something we want to share with, with our board and with the community, this is our opportunity to share it. If we don't and we wait till the next month, we've missed it. That's my concern. I, I'm hoping we can come up with a balance. Yeah. I don't think that we've held anything back. I believe that we've been as sure. upfront um, and as, as we possibly can. Um, I'm not certain how many people are live streaming us, what, where that is. Um, I'm not certain how many people take a look at, at our minutes, but I know that we try to put out as much information as possible. And I think some of the information that we do give out that's truly important is everything that was just presented basically in this meeting. We had um, a wonderful presentation. We had a handout in regards to that. We've always had information about our budget, about school security, about cameras, you know, anything that's, you know, vital to the community, we've tried to share that. And if there's something that's missing when you take a look at your board package or the, the first draft of it, we can certainly call the superintendent and say, hey, can we add a little bit more to it? And maybe that's the information that we really want to get out to people and make sure that that's there. Madam President, if I may make some comments. I, I do think that it would streamline communication. I agree with Mr. Bradley's um, argument that r having written information, like a, even just three bullet points of a summary is helpful for people as opposed to a verbal summary. I strongly agree with that. I also think there is a spirit of time saving in here too. If we can, so I think about my experience on um, like for example, the wellness committee of which I've served in the past attend a meeting and you know I have my little bullet point list that I bring to my meeting in preparation for reading my bullet point summary list of the meeting at the appropriate time in this line item on the agenda but um, it would be just as easy for me to type that bulleted list up and submit it to the board president um, for example in advance so that it could be attached as a written item uh, just like our other written items here too doing that does not preclude or prohibit discussion about any of those bullet points, or I don't think it would prohibit a board member from adding extra information that has occurred to them in the time as a discussion. And then I would say um, to some of the other logistical issues that were brought up before, and again, for, forgive me if I'm not of speaking out of turn here, but ultimately I'm board secretary, and this seems to me like proofreading someone's uh, bulleted list that they submit in advance is something that I could easily do without burdening the administration with having to do something like that. I can't speak to verifying factual evidence. It could be attached like um, as reported by Kimberly Cavill. So ultimately, I would be responsible for the veracity of the information, but I could certainly provide proofreading, you know, if we were to organize it in such a way that proofreading would need to be required. I guess I would like to think we're, we're all adults and professional adults and we should be able to write correctly and have the appropriate information in there. Um, I guess I would still like to ask for us to be able to have a balance. So is what I'm, what I'm hearing is if you want something in writing and we put it in bullet points. It comes into our board package. So when it comes time for committee reports, um, I would say like for instance, NSSEO, and there's my bullet points. 
I say nothing. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, again, this was just more of an open discussion and not an actionable item. So if that's your choice to do it that way, you could. But if you want to speak to your bullet points, why not? Okay. That's I agree with Mr. Bradley that, that the board members should have an option. Um, and if, if they are interested in submitting you know, three, four bullets from a, a meeting that they attended or some information that they want to share, then certainly have that option to, to do that and then bypass their having to report their report, so to speak. And I'm sorry, I promise I won't stop it. <laughs> um, if, if it does exceed, if we are already supposed to be doing this, if we're, like, we're encouraged to submit things like this, I mean, this might, another elegant solution to this might just be to include it in future board protocols, you know, like it is encouraged that board members submit a written summary ahead of time, encouraged, but not required, for example. I don't know, it's just an idea. I promise I'm done now. Okay, no, no, that, that's perfectly <laughs> fine. I'm, I'm just trying to clarify yes. where, where we want to go with this, because I, I heard bullet points mm. and brevity, and then we don't have to read. <clears throat> that's, that's what I'm hearing. So if the bullet points are there, uh, the person doesn't have to give a report, a verbal report. I would su I mean, it seems to me that a report has to be given whether in writing, verb, like, um, or, or both. Kind of like the uh, freedom of information request. It's an act, like it's an information item, right? It's there, and maybe perhaps it would be standard protocol to call for discussion. Is there any discussion? That would be, like, is there any, an invitation for any the board member to add extra information? read their bullet, bulleted list if they so choose, or for other members to have looked at this and then ask questions. I know I sometimes ask you questions about NSSEO, for example. Uh, that's where my initial reaction goes. And, and I think the option was always there, but I appreciate Mr. Bradley's bringing it up to, to our attention that we, we do have that option to present it in a written format if we so chose. And I know that sometimes um, people may be nervous or, or feel more prepared if they can put it in writing, mm -hmm. gather their thoughts, and submit it for inclusion um, as a report on the agenda versus having to speak about it. What is then the deadline, Madam President, about items being attached to the agenda? I believe we look at what the Friday before our meeting or the latest would be a oh. Monday. The agenda items are always posted um, at a minimum of 48 hours prior to. Uh, the committee reports, I always know when your committees are meeting and uh, some of you sometimes email me that something has happened and you <coughs> want to report in that arena. Um, it would be ideal if possible, if you're going to give me something in writing, that we get it uh, prior to the Friday before because then we would post it as we post all the written documents early for the board of everything that's ready. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that it can't go after that, but that would certainly uh, make it easier on staff. And then if this is the route the board's going, um, we need to clarify who those documents are going to. All right. And then the question I have is if there's a committee meeting, say after that, and there's information to share. Are we in agreement that the committee representative can share it verbally at our board meeting? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I, absolutely. I needed to be clarified on that because I heard, mm -hmm. you know, it's gotta wait till next month and, and that's not appropriate. Yeah. I agree, consensus for me. All right, so then, um, Pete, what are your thoughts on that? If it's, are you okay with that? If it's something that happens um, before our board meeting and it's a verbal presentation, are you okay with that? Anything to make the reports more efficient. Um, you know, we can spend 10 to 15 minutes sometimes verbalizing a report and telling wonderful stories that don't precede the district business. So. Anything that streamlines and expedites those reports, I support. Okay, so you're looking at brevity also as part of it. All right, so um, as far as the committee reports, 
Well, would you like to send them to you? To, uh, would you like to send them to the board president? And then I can take a quick look at it and get it to um, the administration. If you're okay with that, I'm okay I'm with okay that. I'm okay with that. Okay. Sure. Okay, and we're right. aiming it, it, we're aiming for by the Friday before. Well, if possible. Yeah. We, we Dr. Post Small the would Friday need it. Before. Yes, yes. So, if I could have it say what Thursday evening and then I can get it to um, Dr. Small for Friday. Okay. <clears throat> Let's give this a try. Let's see how this goes. And um, I think it'll be great to be able to share information. You're absolutely right about any flyers and things like that and activities that are going on. The more information we can share, the better. All right, Pete, any, uh, Mr. Dombrowski, anything else? No. Nope. Okay, thank you. All right, anything else from, from the board? Or you think we've kind of summed it up a little? All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, that's good discussion. All right, the next item is board member expense. The recommended action is that the Board of Education approve the pre-approval form for future expense reimbursement for Stephen Rosenblum to attend the IASB North Cook Division dinner meeting on February 28th, 2024 as submitted. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Dombrowski. Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. The motion carries. All right, potential topics for future discussion. I did not receive any. All right, thank you. Uh, that will take us to the committee reports. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will be brief. Let's drag out that dead horse Let's one more time. <laughs> All right, we're, and we're starting with NSSEO. <laughs> All right, NSSEO, uh, just a couple of things. They had their institute day, and 1,400 people attended. Molly Dunn, who is the NSSEO Director of Professional Learning and Coaching, did an amazing job with her staff. They were at, at Harper. They were in a couple of other places. They were at the schools. Um, it was a good presentation, a good information, a good positive uh, learning opportunity because the pressure, professional development is really important. Um, the knowledge and skills that are shared at that event, they really enable the staff to work with the students, to learn what's going on in, in um, laws, um, actions, things that can be done, and the staff truly appreciates that and it's definitely a uh, professional learning environment. Another th item with NSSEO is the facility committee uh, is gonna be meeting in about two weeks. They're gonna really take a look at what needs to be repaired um, and down the road. They're gonna review and prioritize the repairs. Then that should be able then to go to the uh, finance committee and the finance committee can take a look at uh, what needs to be done and really start looking at, at the budgeting because the budget that gets established there you know, affects our district. So it's not just the salaries um, for NSSEO, it's also any of the repairs and things that need to be done there. So that is for NSSEO. That takes us to community and family support, excuse me, family services report. Ms. Barron? Yeah, I'll be very, very quick. Um, the United Palestine Coalition had their meeting yesterday and they were promoting a scholarship opportunity for high school student or high school seniors. And um, this is through the Township Officials of Illinois Scholarship Fund and the TOI is awarding seven two thousand dollar scholarships to students planning to pursue their education at an Illinois college or university. So the deadline is March 1st, 2024. Um, and you can visit uh, toi.org for more information about the scholarship opportunity. Okay, thank you. Is that something then that our, our schools are aware of for those, that scholarship? If not, then maybe that's what we need to find out and get that information out to them. Okay, so there's an example of information Perfect. out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. 
All right, then that takes us to District 211 Foundation Report. Uh, we did meet briefly. Currently working on developing a scholarship platform so then our students are aware of what scholarships are available and the, um, the criteria for it and the application deadlines. So it goes along with that. All right, I don't think we have any other committee reports. <coughs> that takes us to announcements. Um, it's listed there. The next item would be closed session. And since we have it on our agenda, I am going to read it, but I believe we've probably covered everything in our first closed session. So the recommended action is that the board enter closed session to discuss minutes of meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meetings Act. Probable or imminent litigation against, affecting, or on behalf of the public body. Appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees and collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or their representatives. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Barron? No. Mr. Bradley? No. Ms. Cavill? No. Mr. Dombrowski? No. Mr. Rosenblum? No. Mrs. Klemkowitz? No. The motion fails. All right, the last items that are on our agenda are um, that the closed session minutes of June 15th, 2023, July 20th, 2023, August 17th, 2023, September 21st, 2023, October 19th, 2023, and November 9, 2023, no longer require confidential treatment and are to be approved and placed on file. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Okay, roll call, please. Ms. Barron? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. Next is that the Board of Education accepts the retirement requests of Deborah Madej, effective December 2026, according to the master contract of the District 211 United Support Staff. Sandra Murr Imas, Effective December 2027, consistent with the master contract of the District 211 Teachers Unit, Union. Kenneth Novak, effective December 2026, according to the master contract of the District 211 Operations Maintenance Group. And Robert Zimmerman, effective June 2027, according to the master contract of the District 211 Operations Manage Maintenance <coughs> Group. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. Next is that effective February 5th, 2024, Helen Miller be appointed as, dis excuse me, as Director of Insurance and Group Benefits at a gross salary of 115000 May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Barron? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next item is that the employee, Lionel Clark Johnson, be suspended for two days without pay, that the Board of Education adopt a resolution authorizing a notice to remedy for Lionel Clark Johnson, and that such notice be provided to the employee by the Secretary of the Board of Education. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Rosenblum? Aye. Ms. Cavill? Aye. Mr. Dombrowski? Aye. Ms. Barron? Abstain. Mr. Bradley? Aye. Mrs. Klimkowitz? Aye. The motion carries. And there is no other business to come before the board then that the board president declares this meeting of the Board of Education adjourned at 9.07 p.m. Thank you. <clears throat>